All right, turn this down. Shave the unibrow, so that's nice. I will say I I do have to I have to stop reading. There's not many comments, so it's hard to not read the ones that that there are. But nevertheless, I got to get out of that habit because they get to me, they bother me. I'm not gonna lie. I will say I'm 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 not anxious, but anxious for lack of a better word of when people are gonna start picking up on the fact that I wear the same stuff every time. And no, I'm not like going to the gym in dirty clothes. I just do my laundry all the time, which, you know, people have their opinions. But I, I am a creature of habit. I like wearing the same stuff, similar stuff. Um, I think I'm like slightly autistic in the sense of and I don't mean that insultively, I, I took a test, so based on the test, there's a high chance I might actually be. But, like fabrics and stuff, I'm very particular about that, so. Anyways, um, I feel like people are going to start like commenting saying that I just go wearing dirty shit. I don't. People do keep commenting that I'm copying Sam. Uh, what can you do, I guess? Just going to the gym, doing my thing. Like, it's similar content style, yeah, but at the same time, it's like, there's only so much you can really do. You go to the gym and you work out. I'm not going to, I'm not going to post a super edited thing because I just don't feel like it. And I don't know, I feel like nobody would give a shit to just watch just a workout, no talking. I'm not going to talk at the gym, so, I don't know. Sam did it, Rich did it. I'm doing it. Either watch it, watch it or don't. I will say some of them are kind of silly. Like, I think I talked about the, the road mic comment that I saw. But uh, I saw one, another one of a guy saying that I talk like him or I'm trying to talk like him. Like, do you know how, one, you'd have to be like pretty idiotic to like go out of your way to try and mimic somebody and think that nobody would notice. This is just me, it's not my fault that we happen to talk similar. Also, I don't even know if neurotic is the right word, but you would have to be quite neurotic to uh, see somebody and then feel the need to mimic and adapt aspects of their personality down to the fact of how they talk. That would be some parasocial weirdo stuff. But and now I overthink when I'm talking because this is how I talk. But anyways. Um, I feel like there's another thing I was going to ch chat about. Don't remember, but in the meantime, I will talk about the lift. It's back day. Oh, that's the other thing. As I'm trying to, as I'm experimenting with no rest days, and I'm doing the chest, back, arms, legs split. I already know there's going to be more Sam comments, which... You know, I have nothing against Sam, so I don't want any of that to be, any of my disdain towards the comments to be taken that way. It's just, I don't know. You could, you could put in anybody's name. It's like I'm just, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just doing me. But if you want to know why I'm switching the split, I talk about it in yesterday's chest day video. So go watch that. So I'm not a broken record. But today is just back. By the way, oh. all right, thing fell. I have like a cheap Walmart um, like suction cup mount for the phone, but where was I? Uh, yeah, yesterday, first time doing like a chest only day. Cause usually in the past of my like whole lifting career, I think I used to do like an upper lower split and then uh, push pull legs and then some variants of kind of like a combination of the two uh, so doing a chest only day was different my chest whew, I like it I like it I like it I like it feels productive feels nice like uh, I feel like that wasn't very descriptive of what I'm what I'm thinking I, f I feel like I really you know blew through my chest 
my packs in a good way. So I am excited to get to the arm day and see how that feels a day of just arms because that is that is the part of the main reason why I'm not doing push pull legs and repeat with no rest is because there's no arm focus day and I need to bring up my arms. But again, I talk about that more in yesterday's video. Um, today, back, we're gonna do, probably gonna start off with a plate loaded T-bar row, a little John Jewett style. Um, and then, I don't know what, what the second machine or second movement that I'm doing is called, but I think it's hammer strength. It's a pin loaded machine. You guys have seen me do it before. It's like a low to high row, hits the upper back. Um, so that'll be our second movement. And then, We'll start to shift focus a little bit more towards the lats. And I'm gonna do plate loaded hammer strength iso row. Um, talk about that. And then I might do a wide grip pull down. We'll just see how I'm feeling. I don't really like those a lot. But uh, if I whether I do that or not, the following movement in order would be um, then a close grip underhand pull down. Very lat focused. Um, if they have the Vulcan here might use that um, and then I'm trying to remember what I wrote down then I think I'm gonna do my low rows and I may or may not superset those with like pullovers but I probably won't because I believe after the low rows I'm definitely planning on using the actual pullover machine to kind of finish off and then <sighs> that'll be it um, this will be relatively similar to how my my pool days used to be um, or my, my back days, because back, back when I would do push-pull legs, like, originally, I wasn't really emphasizing my arms. Um, and so, you know, in hindsight, it was such a back-focused day. Um, and I would literally come in and do every single pack movement that the gym had for, like, just just a spammed, like, superset 3 by 10 of everything. And once I did all the different back movements they had, that was that was it oh and then i would finish off with probably like some dumbass like chasing a pump bicep curl stuff which is probably partially why my arms are lagging is because i never really trained them with as much like smart intent as i probably should have um but uh yeah literally i'd come in and superset rows and pull downs for three sets and then rows and pullovers for three sets and then a separate pin loaded uh, pull over mach pull down machine. Then I'll do hammer strength iso rows and T bar rows. Then a plate loaded lat pull down. And then I think a reverse good lat pull down. And then something else. But we're at the gym. Uh, I don't want to yap too much. I'm by myself, so I got to stay on focus today. So, oh, what's that? All right, I'll see you guys in there. All right, first movement, I counted out my movements. I'm gonna do like two to three sets per thing. This is a good amount of movements. So, T-bar rows, usual. I will say, I need to do my due diligence of making sure I start working on my like hip and glute mobility. My lower back is still tight from the last leg day. So. I dropped the plate because just for the rep range I'm kind of trying to aim for. And then also, uh, like this specific movement, I want to get a little bit better, you know, a little stricter on the form, at least a little more of a stretch up top to actually let my like upper back, like lower traps, actually kind of like stretch out. So, uh, oh. Oh. 
This is a MTS row, hammer strength. I don't even know what that means, if I'm being honest, but I like doing this to target my like mid and upper back. Ah. Just trying to get a little more control on this. A little less erect there. Ah. Traps would probably be somewhat beneficial for this set, but I think I'm gonna hold off and just finish this last set. And then start strapping up for the rest of the stuff. Just because, you know, I don't know. I just don't feel like wearing them yet. I, and mainly because, I don't know if you can see, this machine has like the rubber padded gripping. And I really hate setting up straps machines like that it's just i don't know it just feels like shit like it's a lot more convenient and less irritating to uh set it up on like you know a handle that's you know made of metal with you know the bar and everything just doesn't stick as much as you're trying to actually wrap it and set it in so Cause I like, I like if I'm gonna do like a traditional pull down style movement, I like this a lot better than um, like the you know typical wide bar cable attachment style. So definitely forms feeling a wee bit sweepy. So I'm gonna put some straps on. That's a little too late. I like I was like gauging before this, but I did all my sets before this with uh no straps. Like, oh, that feels like a good working set. Guess not. Alright. Oh shit. Oof. 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 
Well, that's what I get for buying the cheapest ones on Amazon. Oh, this is way too late. I uh, might as well just title today's video Forum Day. I just. I don't know what it is. How these straps are just because they're new and they need to be like, you know, broken in so they aren't as like stiff and like you know, wrap easier to just get a tighter set in. But I am. I feel like I'm just burning out my fucking arms. That's what I did. I was got my watch in my pocket. nicer I'm trying to set these up on the rubber pads Oh. 
I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little, oh, heartburn's coming. I'm a little gassed. Um, one of the negative things about having a dominant back, I guess, is like, I feel like everything's tiring out, except for actually my back. Ugh. There we go. My shit mobility. Problem solved. All right. We finished off the rows. We just got a couple sets of this left. And then ah, we'll be in the car. It'll be like magic for you guys. And I get to go home and eat a mystery meal. It's funny, I, I like constantly talk about my meals and what I eat. And yeah, I'll still get people like damning me asking like what I eat. Or like or what I eat in a day. It's like I you guys just don't pay attention. There we go. There we go. I was gonna say this machine is like the worst machine to get in if you're large, but really the more fair way to describe it is if you have poor mobility. Ah there we go. Mm. Oh. Mm. There we go. All right, I really hope this is connected, but ah. so uh, I took a little gander at the questions on the Instagram questionnaire. By the way, if you watch these videos every day, the following night or morning, I'll post a Q&A on my Instagram story for you guys to ask questions so I can have some discourse with you guys, gives me something to talk about, gives some interaction. So go check that out if you happen to watch these and not follow me on Instagram. Um, I don't have Abdullah or Ryan, so I don't have a training buddy with me here today to read off the questions from a screenshot. So I'm going off of the dome and the memory. First one was by one guy um, asking what is my current split focused on, mainly arms. Uh, and I think between yesterday's video and today, I think I've probably answered that pretty well. And then the other few questions were all by the same person and they're all kind of along the same uh, topic uh, about, uh, you know, types of training in terms of volume, uh, like choices of volume, etc. One of them asked about uh, like what to do about uh, central nervous system fatigue without getting too much into it. Uh, Basically, reduce excess or, or better put, uh, wasteful volume. For example, if, if let's say you do two sets on a movement of like a six to eight rep range, good tempo, and those are like the true failure. If, if those are truly the failure, you know, you're, you're shitting yourself on that last few reps of each one. You probably don't need another third or fourth set. Now, if you want to do that, and your recovery is fine. I'm not gonna sit here and be the volume police. However, if you're doing that and you feel like you're not recovering well, then it would be time to possibly re reassess. Um, and then it was talking about uh, how do you kind of pick your volume, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna kind of group everything into the same kind of 
spiel slash uh, talking of the point that I'm about to get to of, you know, when it comes to how much volume to do, how much volume per week, how much volume per session, uh, yes, there are, you know, science-based optimal stuff. If you want, if you want the most optimal science-based responses, go look at what guys like TNF and, uh, you know, JPG and Ride Jewers are saying, uh, cause by all means, those guys are reading the literature and they're, they're spouting it in a great way. Um, and my philosophy on that when it comes to redirecting or putting that information out to the more average lifter in the sense of like I want to say this in the humblest way I wouldn't I wouldn't put myself in the most average lifter in the sense of or the I don't even want to say 99 percentile because if you actually look at the numbers it's probably more accurate but I'm just going to say 90 so it sounds less cocky uh, you know, in, in, the, in the top 10% of guys who are, you know, everything's doubted and they're, they're, their life revolves around the gym. And the majority of guys, even gym bros, even guys on TikTok, are having a much better, you know, level of balance. So, in terms of those guys, especially when talking or answering this question towards people who aren't, you know, near their upper limit of what they can do and really trying to maximize everything, for the, I would say for the majority of people, a good answer is going to be, it's, oh... All right, I'm not really like this angle, but the thing fell down, so we got to work with it. Uh, for the majority of guys, you can it's you can almost apply a little bit of what's working for you. Um, go off of the optimal numbers of sets per week, but I would say error in the beginning towards more. Uh, I think nowadays a lot of people, especially when it comes to the the not so extremely advanced lifter, uh, so the majority of people. Uh, I think they almost underestimate what their body can recover from, especially if they're, you know, late high school, early college age. Your body's pretty resilient. And I like the philosophy of see what you can manage. So I want to throw out arbitrary numbers so I don't want somebody to, you know, nitpick and be like, that number doesn't make sense. I'm just going to throw out arbitrary numbers for the sake of the point I'm trying to make. Let's say you start out doing 20 sets per week for a muscle group. Now, if, if, if those are good quality sets and you, you know, you're growing and you're, you're progressing and you feel like you recovered well by the time you get back to that muscle group uh, in terms of your training split, then stick with it. If anything, maybe even try adding a set as a way to progressively overload throughout the week, you know, or another set. If you're responding well, if you're recovering well, if you're growing well. Now, if you feel like you're just, you know dogging by the time you get back to it and there's there's nothing left you're fatigued you're tired maybe pull it back down to 15 and uh or 10 and then you know maybe you know the next rotation you're like ah that doesn't feel like enough you, know, you dropped it down to 10 maybe we'll, maybe we'll bump it up to like 15 and so with that you can kind of have a bit of a trial and error um because yes there are ideal numbers um but as with so many things especially in bodybuilding Everybody's very different. Everybody has very different genetics. What some people can do, some people can't do. Um, I know plenty of people that can go run, you know, a full marathon and not really feel much. If you made me run a marathon tomorrow, I would die. Now, granted, I'm not training for it, but you get my point. Um, and so with that, you know, you're going to have people that are going to respond much better to a lot lower volume. Uh... Whereas some people might be able to handle the upper volume. And yes, there's going to be the arguments of, oh, well, even if you can handle the upper volume, it's still less optimal. In the end, if you're growing, you're growing. Yes, you could nitpick it and nuance it to, you know, the finest detail. Um, but the majority of people aren't, aren't there yet, aren't going to be needing to do that yet. Um, so I'm sure that's probably not as satisfying as an answer as the guy was hoping for, but... In, in the simplest and non-person specific answer that I can give in this video to try and apply it as generically to as many people that are watching this. Um, don't get too hung up on, you know, doing everything, quote, by the book. Like, let's say if you're doing your chest day and let's say, oh, you see that you're only supposed to do 10 sets a week for that muscle group. And let's say it's your last, you know, rotation of chest for the week and you're, you just did your eighth set of chest 
uh, or you just did your ninth set and maybe you're on the pec deck and, and boom, now you do your 10th set and you're like feeling really good and you're not really feeling, you're feeling like you really need like another set or two to, to blow it out, but you're sitting there in your head like, ah, but I can't, I'm out of sets for the week. So fucking, in my opinion, do that extra set, do that extra set or two. If, if you really feel like there's, there's gas in that tank and you feel that you would potentially benefit more from another good quality set or two, if you really feel like that's in there, then do that. Push yourself and if you recover, and now you know where you stand. If you don't recover, then now you know where you stand. Because, um, yeah, like, I think a lot of people get so nitpicky on... And I I don't want to sound like I'm specifically picking on, on types of people when I say this, but you'll have, you know, 17-year-olds that are 150 pounds soaking wet. And, you know, they're trying to fine-tune their split and their workout choice and their joint angles and their their reps per set and their sets per week and does that stuff make a difference yes but do you, it's you're over complicating it so much that your dual likes to say and my dad likes to say you're, you're you're struggling to see the forest through the trees and you might end up turning yourself away from it if you find that you're over complicating it to a to a degree that you're not enjoying it like uh you know and some people might enjoy the, you know, minute stuff of that. I do, but I'm also very different than an average person. Uh, but, you know, that brings me to my next point, and, you know, I'm home, so I'm not going to spiel too long. But I think there's also a, a valuable aspect, or, or the aspect of enjoyability is very valuable when it comes to, you know, designing your program or your routine. Because, you know, John Jewett words it well, you know, you can, you can set everything up by the book and, you know, be optimal and ideal. But if, let's say you're 100% by the book, but you're missing the stuff you're supposed to do 50% of the time, you might be better going back to being 75% of the book, but that 75, you're doing everything to 100%, if that makes sense. Like if, let's say I create a leg day that's the most optimal science-based leg day. And, you know, it's the, you know, objectively, it's the most perfect written leg day routine but you're going in there and you just hate each routine like for example i personally i hate bulgarian split squats doesn't matter if it's dumbbell smith i i doesn't matter i don't like the movement in general and then i especially don't like iso stuff for the most part on legs just because i feel like it's one of those things in bulgarian specifically like you train your one leg to failure to where you just feel like you're gonna die and then you get up and you're like fuck i have to do that a whole one other time just for one single set and however many sets you're doing but it's just it's just i don't know it's very demotivating for me maybe i'm a bitch but so that would be an example of you know if if a bulgarian split squat was the world's most ideal perfect you know optimal leg exercise having it in my routine is going to be more detrimental than beneficial because I'm not going to hit that to a great degree. I'm not going to enjoy it. I'm not going to be looking forward to my leg days. It's going to bring down the overall quality of the session as a whole because there's so much mental negativity towards it. Um, so, you know, I always like to, uh, this would be my last point on it, like rack pulls. I think, uh, or bent over barbell rows. I think bent over barbell rows are from an optim optimal uh, perspective, one of the worst back exercises that you can choose because there's such a lack of stability and there's so much indirect work on everything in your posterior chain just to balance yourself um, that I personally, I would never use it. I also don't enjoy them. However, if there's somebody that loves the, the, the shit out of them and they, they feel like they're truly missing something, if it's not a part of their back day, then throw it in at the end or something or, or at the beginning or somewhere because that's going to make the person a lot more enthusiastic with their session and put a lot more effort and intensity into it um but anyways that's that um i'm gonna go eat and then uh i'm putting in a starlight for the headliner not the whole thing uh, i had that in my truck but i'm putting in an anna seat can't see where i'm pointing but i'm pointing at the passenger seat uh i'm putting in a little heart into her initial because i had that in the my last truck um and uh you know can't put it in one and then take it away so because i sold my truck and i have a car so uh that'll be my little afternoon project but all right i'm gonna get this video up hopefully sooner rather than later 
I'll see you guys.